DR Drake 63 here again today and uh, gonna do a comparison today in shooting two different 357 magnums with different barrel lengths. I'm gonna shoot a four inch which we'll call a combat length barrel. This is the Smith & Wesson 586 and 357 magnum and uh, have talked about this firearm in a video or two. I, it's, uh, it's from their new classic series Yes, it has uh, it has the dreaded uh, internal lock. I don't like that, but that's not going to affect the accuracy. So, what we're going to do is compare shooting this four-inch barrel to this six-inch barrel, which is a Smith and Weston uh, model 66. Now, this is a little bit older model, does not have that dreaded uh, internal lock, but what it does have is two extra inches of sight radius, and that becomes kind of a big deal for me. Uh, primarily just because uh, I do wear corrective lenses, I am nearsighted. So the difference between the front and the back sight relative to my corrected vision, I don't wear bifocals, uh, and relative to the target, all matters. It's all a thing for me, and, and maybe you watching have the, the same issue. Regardless of whether or not you have corrective lenses or not, uh, or what your eyesight is, a Longer sight radius almost always means more accuracy. So I'm gonna to expect today to shoot a little bit better with a six inch barrel versus a four inch barrel, now all things being equal. Now, I say all things being equal. I'm not shooting with the exact same model. Um, this is a K frame. Uh, it's got a very nice broken in trigger and I'm going to shoot it in single action, okay? Now, it's also an extremely smooth double action trigger. Um, and I can, I, I'm able to fire this, this firearm without disrupting uh, my point of aim uh, much at all. And it's due to practice, but it's also because it's a darn good trigger. Now this newer firearm, also gonna fire this in single action, but I'll also note that this in double action, same situation. It's, it's not a, a hard trigger to pull. When I hear people talk about, oh, the double action on the Smith & Wesson is horrible, but it's great in single action, it tells me that they're more than likely somebody that have only fired striker fired or semi-auto pistols and aren't used to firing a double action re a revolver at all. So that is something to think about. Anyway, um, my expectation is, is that I will shoot the four inch barrel um, not quite as accurately as the six inch barrel. I said all things being equal, trigger in for all intents and purposes, equal. Uh, gonna shoot the same rounds, gonna first shoot 38 specials at two different distances at 10 yards and 25 yards, and also gonna shoot 357, uh, 158 grain loads, also at 10 and 20. Gonna shoot one, uh, one cylinder of each at each distance, uh, so that's going to yield me a total of eight targets. Got some results in back that we'll talk about and uh, uh, see how that does. Now, keep in mind, guys, this is not scientific. I'm not shooting off a rest, uh, as always with pistols. Unless I'm sighting a man or doing something, any firearm with an optic, I'm not shooting off a bench and I'm not shooting at rest. I try to replicate the situation that I would fire that gun if I was hunting, if I was out plinking in the woods. Uh, or if, God forbid, I was in a self-defense situation. So with that in mind, let's take a look at our results. And what we're going to see today is how I shoot these two firearms. You might shoot them differently. 
I'm wearing a glove here, and the reason I'm wearing this, it's a grip glove. You can get this at the hardware store. A pair costs less than four bucks. Fits the hand very tightly, doesn't affect ability to get in the trigger well. The reason I'm wearing it is because I was also shooting this 1911 today, and despite, despite the Model 80 having a, a less pronounced uh, beaver tail sticking out the back, or lack thereof, it was digging my hand a little bit, so I wanted to try to give myself a little relief, and it worked really good. Um, as far as how it works with these guys, again, um, very good grip, no no interference or feel on the trigger, um, and so um, sometimes when I shoot 357, I do tend to get a blister on the inside of my thumb, and uh, so found that uh, either putting some tape on there or today tried these gloves actually work good. A very nice solution, and uh, like I said, it didn't didn't affect my ability to be accurate at all. But that's a side note. It has nothing to do with accuracy here or there, but uh, for you guys that sometimes complain about getting your hands beat up, you might try a simple solution like this. So we headed out to our favorite range today, the Modern Sportsman in Burnsville, Minnesota, and uh, Going to use this 4 inch 586 and 357 Magnum. This is almost a brand new firearm. And this is a new to me 6 inch model 66 grips by Altamont. Range choice today 130 grain, 38 special. This is range ammo, full metal jacket, and uh, some PMC 158 grain jacket at soft point and 357 Magnum. Targets we selected today are easy to acquire with, uh, with these kind of sights. No problem with that. And uh, we're going to start out by running this out to 30 feet. That's 10 yards for you guys that uh, are math majors. So we're going to start out with the 38 Special. We're going to start out at a distance of 30 feet. It's kind of like shooting a cap gun or a 22. There's there's no discernible recoil at all. It's kind of interesting. You're going to see more of a more of a flame ball, more of a fireball with this round than you will with uh, the 357. And obviously that's a function of how much powder is getting burned and things of that nature. But um, looking at uh, our first results here, you're going to see that uh, we are. A little bit low. I'm aiming for dead center, and um, uh, we're going to find that's not really a function of the round. It's a function of me ne needing to adjust uh, the elevation on the rear sight, which is something that I didn't come prepared to do today. But uh, looking at the grouping there, you can see what we're looking at. And now we're moving on to the Model 66 with the longer barrel. And uh, as I said uh, going into this, I'd expect to shoot this a little bit more accurately. This is also 38 special. This is also at a distance of 30 feet or 10 yards. Have to say that uh, this is also just it's like shooting a pellet gun or a, a BB gun. There's just absolutely no kick with 38 special on these 357 Magnums. Um, enough weight, enough frame size, so forth and so on that it just doesn't happen. Taking a look uh, at this target coming back in from uh, 30 feet, we're going to see that uh, kind of as expected, we did get a, a tighter group, much tighter group. Now, you know, I didn't have any warm-up shots prior to shooting the, shooting the 586. Maybe that has something to do with it, but uh, um, I think that uh, it's just is a little bit better set up for, for, my, uh, for my eyes and the fact that you do have that longer sight radius help. So... Let's see how distance from target might make a difference. And here we're going to go out to 25 yards, which is 75 feet. First uh, firearm we're going to shoot at this distance again is the 586. I don't know what these guys around me are doing, but uh, I came to do some man size shooting today. Ha ha. I didn't really shoot this fast. I took a little bit more time, but I figured your guys' time is valuable. You don't need to see me doing all this breathing between shots. 
bringing this target back in. Um, not all that impressed with my effort here, to be honest with you. I mean, I guess if I'm shooting at a in a man sized target, or even even doing some uh, deer hunting at that distance, that that I've done okay. But uh, I'm capable of uh, of a much better grouping than that at that distance. Now we're going to go ahead and uh, same thing uh, using the model 66 38 special at uh, 25 yards and um, got this speeded up a little bit for you guys. Now here we're going to see a target which um, I'm not going to lie to you guys is very unimpressive to me outside of that one shot right there. Um, I've got four out of six that even hit paper. So um, I don't know if, uh, if I was rushing it or what the issue was. No, that isn't the same hole twice. I'd like to tell you that, but it wasn't. So um, not a very, good, uh, a very good performance with the six inch barrel, four out of six. Um, I would have expected something better. But now we're going to uh, a more powerful round. We're going to these 357 Magnums. Those are achieving around 1300, 1350 feet per second, something in that range. So. They're not the hottest loads you can get, but uh, pretty decent loads. And uh, we're going to shoot these again, starting out. I made a comment earlier about uh, about the flames shooting out of the out of the firearm a lot less with this 357 round than we saw earlier with the 38 special. So. Uh, I find that kind of interesting. I guess I would have expected uh, the other way around, but again, it's a, a function of the powder involved and things of that nature. Still very light recoil, very easy shooting, without a doubt. And uh, looking at uh, this particular grouping, this is the uh, same point aim I was using before, and uh, it does shoot uh, you know, a good inch or, or inch and a half higher than the other group. And uh, a little bit better, uh, a little bit better grouping this this time with the 357 Magnum. And now we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing, shooting out of uh, shooting out of that Model 66. And here you see it, slow motion, just to kind of get an idea, you know, how much kick or or not we see with this round. I I don't really consider that to be. Uh, any kind of recoil that's an issue at all. I could shoot these all day long. Uh, I guess if I could afford to shoot them all day long, I should say, but uh, uh, doesn't doesn't beat me up in any way. It's not hard for me to keep the uh, keep the muzzle on target either. And uh, the reason I'm making that face is uh, I know we're going to be bringing in some nice results on that particular target, and we did. Uh, we've got uh, one hole that we shot twice. That's on the upper left. And uh, so out of six rounds, we, we really uh, uh, got tight with this particular group. So, you know, again, this is the kind of difference that I would expect with a six-inch barrel versus a four. And, uh, again, very happy with that. Man, the trip. Now we're going to run these guys out to uh, 75 feet again. This particular time, I'm not going to show my shooting video. I think you guys kind of get the... The hang of that and as you can see here about the same about the same kind of result uh, with uh, with the 586 here you see five hit paper one of them went flying not really sure where pretty sure I didn't hit the guy next to me but uh, here we're gonna go ahead now and uh, switch out and we're gonna use uh, the model 66 and here you see that target and uh, that's that's a, a better, better effort, much better effort than uh, last time with uh, the 38 Special. About where I had expected. They had one that was kind of high and left, but uh, it's kind of a function of how well I can see things at that distance as well. And so uh, that's about the kind of effort I'd expect. Um, and I can tighten that up certainly with uh, with some more practice. But uh, this is only my, I think, my third time out shooting that firearm. So. Overall, very pleased with uh, that particular result. And uh, here I have uh, exactly a dozen rounds left, a 357 Magnum. So I'm going to take my one target that's left. And the top half, we're going to use this as an aim point for 
the 586, the bottom half of the target, we're going to use that as a name point for the Model 66. So let's do some one-handed shooting and see what kind of uh, results we can get. And again, we're going to go out to 10 yards or 30 feet with this particular group. Shooting one-handed now, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and speed this up for you again. As you can see, not, not much of a fireball at all with this ammo. Um, not much of a kick at all with this ammo. Very pleased with it. Um, the double action on these triggers is, is very smooth as well, and uh, I did not, for purposes of uh, accuracy comparison, shoot double action today. Um, but uh, uh, maybe that's purposes of another video at some point. But uh, looking back and, and looking at these results here, you can see that uh, my top group, one-handed, using the 586 in my bottom group, outside of that flyer, a lot tighter using the Model 66. So I think we're, we're starting to see with, uh, with a couple of outlier examples on these targets, I think we're starting to see about what we expected to see, and that is uh, more accuracy with the longer barrel, all things being equal. And uh, just taking a look at these targets again, this is the 586 at 30 yards versus the Model 66. That was with 38 Special, and then here we go out to 25 yards, Second target here again is uh, the Model 66. Come back in with 357 Magnum, 30 yards at 586. And uh, my best group of the day with the Model 66 at 30 yards with the 357 Magnum. And lastly, we're out at, uh, we're out at uh, 75 feet, respectively, with the 586 and the Model 66. So about what I kind of figured out of these Smith & Wessons, you give me a little bit more sight radius, I'm going to shoot it better. Of course, we're only talking about one aspect of shooting these, not accuracy with things such as maneuverability, quickness of draw, and other things where you might actually have uh, advantage going to a shorter barrel. So, as always, uh, we appreciate you watching. This is DR Drake 63, enjoying shooting these fine Smith & Wesson revolvers. Remember, guys, support the National Rifle Association. They've got our back. Let's make sure we got theirs. This is DR Drake 63 saying, see you later.